All right, we're gonna talk about that banded pull-up and whether or not it's really worth it when compared to negative pull-ups. So you'll see people when they can't do strict pull-ups, they'll hop on a band, will do it, or sometimes they do negatives, sometimes they do ring rows. We're gonna talk about the banded pull-up versus negatives. Now, depending what your goal is, we'll see a lot of people who can't do pull-ups, they'll just throw that band on there, they're able to bump out some reps, they did some work, awesome, great. Uh, negatives are harder, which is why a lot of people don't like to do them. Um, as well as sometimes people don't feel like they're getting as much as a workout because their heart rate isn't getting as high. Now, I don't know about you, when I do negatives for different things, I have to brace so hard that I'm barely breathing so I don't get that second hole, I didn't feel like I got a workout. So, if your goal is to get strict pull-ups, first off, doing strict pull-ups every other week is not gonna get you there. The banded pull-up is not really gonna help you too much. Now, the problem is, most people, even when they do strict pull-ups, they have them, they don't like to go all the way down because the bottom's a weak range, and then usually that last little bit is a weak range. So when we do that banded pull up, you get a lot of help at the bottom, you get less help as you go up, and then usually at the top you see people start missing and kind of sticking their chin way up in the air trying to get there. So the banded pull up is not a great substitute for pull ups if you're looking to get stronger at them. Now, the flip side of that is when people do negatives, a lot of times they only do like a three second negative. We want you to go all the way up to 10 seconds with it, all right, and we want you to be smooth on the way down. So it shouldn't be one, two, three, four, and then whoo, really fast through the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what we see with most people is they cannot hold that tempo through the bottom range. Now I point to my elbow at five, because at five seconds we want to be at 90 and 90, halfway through it. That bottom range is the first part of the strict pull-up where people get stuck. If you never spend time there really overloading it, actually training it, how would you ever expect to get stronger? It's like, I know a lot of people who squat a little bit above parallel all the time, and they're like, oh, when I get heavier, I'll be able to get down there. Any range of motion you don't train, you're just not gonna have strength there, okay? So when you have a choice between banded and strict, or negatives, and you wanna get those strict pull-ups, do negatives and make sure you're going slow through the whole range of motion. Don't just collapse at the bottom. That bottom range of motion is really important to get over that first sticking point, and then that second sticking point is just a couple inches from that bar. So if you want strict, lose the bands, all right? Maybe in a conditioning workout, but that's a whole nother conversation where not you should be doing pull-ups anyway in a conditioning workout. Get into those negatives, put them to work, all right? Let's see you get strict pull-ups before next year is open since I know that's probably one of your goals if you're watching this. Talk to you guys soon.